Welcome to the Rock Church and World Outreach Center. We pray that this message will strengthen and encourage you. Now here's a message from one of our special guests. All right, got your Bibles. I'm reading from the New King James Version. Isaiah chapter 10, verse 27. I can see you, Ron. And the title of the message is this. Feed your fat. No, 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 don't go there. You're wrong. (laughs) Here we go. Uh, Isaiah 10, verse 27. It shall come to pass in that day that his burden will be taken away from your shoulder and his yoke from your neck, and the yoke will be destroyed because of the anointing oil. I was with a friend of mine back east and I was telling him that we've had an incredible upsurge in the miraculous in our meetings. I said we're seeing more miracles than ever. We're seeing an upsurge of greater miracles. And I said the thing that I don't understand is I've done nothing to bring that about. Understand God's the healer, but I've done nothing to bring that about. I haven't fasted. I haven't done all these things that people say you ought to do. And he looked at me and he said, I know why. I said, why? He said, I'm going to give you a hint. Go home, study it. You're smart enough to find it. Preach, get a message, preach on it, send it to me, and I'll tell you if you're right. So I did that, discovered it, sent the message, and he said I was right. So I want to bring it to you this morning. Stay with me, we'll work through it. Firstly, a scripture taken out of context becomes a pretext. And if we look at our reading in Isaiah chapter 10, verse 27... We notice the word in the old King James, the anointing, in the NIV, the anointing oil. And as most of us, if not all of us, think it's extraordinary power from God. But in spite of our preconditioned thinking, it's not quite what it means, what it's talking about. The word anointing in the Hebrew language is the word shaman, S-H-A-M-E-Y-N. And it literally in the Hebrew language means fat. Everybody shout fat. Fat. Mm. The translators thought it must be the Hebrew equivalent shamen, S-H-A-M-E-N, which actually means anointing oil. So they put that word in thinking that's what it ought to be. No commentators anywhere say that the word shaman is referring to the anointing oil. In the Hebrew, it is an impossible leap to go from shamin to shamain fat. The literal translation of Isaiah chapter 10 verse 27 is this. The yoke is destroyed because of the fat. The NIV, which I joke about, is the nearly inspired version. (laughs) We'll forgive you if you have it, but I'm quoting from it today. Is this. In that day, their burden will be lifted from your shoulders, their yoke from your neck, and the yoke will be broken because you've grown so fat. (laughs) Hmm. 
in understanding Hebrew language is different to Greek and English. Hebrew language, if you get a word, is painting a picture. The word is a picture. Where in English and Hebrew, each word is linear, a word means a word. So here's the picture in the Hebrew. There's an ox. That's what it's talking about. Has a heavy wooden yoke around its neck. That means it is enslaved to the will of its master, forcing it into a life of servitude and bondage. Eventually, because they feed the ox good food so it will work well, because of what the ox eats and the work it does, which is incredible exercise, it becomes so healthy, so fit, that that wooden yoke around its neck simply bursts one day from its neck and the ox is now free. It's a picture for each of us. When we find ourselves bound, oppressed, beaten down, under pressure, overwhelmed, whatever, by the enemy, we can be strong, we can conquer, and we can become free. Now, how do we become strong? How do we become fat? Four things. Number one, we must feed our spirit and our soul daily with the Word of God. Oh, you say, we know that. Yeah, I know you know it. But the problem is most Christians don't do it. That's the issue. They come to church on Sunday or wherever, whenever, and they think that'll suffice. Or they go, I'm too busy. No, no, no. You need to do it. Number two, praise God each day. The psalmist David said, I will praise the Lord daily. Do it. Number three, pray. And number four, speak in tongues. These are four things that we need to do on a regular daily basis. From the youngest to the eldest. It doesn't matter if you just got saved or you've been saved for a long time, we need to do this. These are fundamental principles that we as believers need to do. And if we will do them regularly, we will become so healthy, so strong, we will get fat, and the yoke of a tax will automatically be broken each day. The fatness destroys the yoke. Now understand, please. The word fat or fatness in the Word of God is referring to prospering spirit, soul, and body. Not to the size physically. Somebody say, thank God. In Leviticus chapter 3, verse 16, it says, All the fat is the Lord's. There's a term that is used today 
in health and dieting, it is this, front load your life. They say that physically healthy people usually start the day by eating a healthy breakfast. A cup of coffee and a piece of toast on the way out the door is not a healthy breakfast. I know. A healthy breakfast gets our metabolism functioning correctly for the whole day. 44% of all Americans, they say, start the day with a healthy breakfast. That means 56% don't. They have discovered that children in school who've had a healthy breakfast function far better behavior-wise, academic-wise, learning-wise than children who don't have a healthy breakfast. Many children show up at school without having a breakfast. So many churches in the United States and Canada and Britain, Australia and New Zealand, are now going into schools early in the morning and literally feeding children a healthy breakfast. Free. The children are therefore front-loading their life. And the principals and the teachers are saying that after just a few days of this, those same children who were rebellious, unteachable, never learned anything, are now becoming well-behaved, academically secure, and are learning like other kids. What I'm saying to you is this. Start your day in the Word of God. Three people said amen. I've had less. Front load your life every day on a regular basis with prayer, the Word of God, praise, and speaking in tongues. And if you do, you will be prepared for anything that comes your way that day because you've grown fat in God and the yoke will be destroyed automatically. You won't notice it, but little by little, day by day, week by week, month by month, year by year, you will become more healthy, much more strong in God. And I repeat, the yoke will be automatically destroyed because you've grown, grown so fat. I had two operations for cancer. And if you've been around people that have had cancer or if you've had cancer, you know that after you've been operated on, you have to go back to the doctor every month, two months, three months, then it becomes six months, and then when they think you're really doing great each year. Then they tell you after four years, you are a cancer survivor. I'm a cancer survivor. I asked the surgeon, would it help if I worked out? 
And unfortunately, he said yes. <laughs> oh God, I was hoping for no. <laughs> so I asked him, why did you not tell me to work out? I said, we never tell our patients to work out anymore. I said, why not? Two things. Number one, they don't do it. Or number two, they start and do it for two or three weeks and quit. Oh. I said, well, I won't quit. He said, you will work out. I said, yeah. He said, you don't have to do it every day, but every day wouldn't hurt you. You're not trying to be Mr. Universe. You can tell that. We just want you to get fitter and stronger. So the first day I go with my friend who knows the trainer at the gym and we're introduced and I tell him what's what and he brings some weights and he said, we'll start with that. Well, I can't lift them. I said, oh, no, no problem. Goes and gets some lighter weights and I can't lift them. Then he goes and gets some lighter weights and I still can't lift them. I mean, I've just had two operations. He said, don't worry about it, it's all right. He comes back with a broom handle. <laughs> I'm not kidding you. He said, I think you can manage this. Felt like slapping him. I work out. Today, I'm able to lift more weights than what he initially wanted to start me with. No, 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 you don't need, no, no, that's, it's not that good. <laughs> Here's what's embarrassing when you're in a gym and you think you're doing great, you're lifting these weights, and you look over to your right, and there's a chick half your size lifting three times your weight. <laughs> so then you think, I better move away from her, I don't want to embarrass her anymore. <laughs> but here's what I've discovered. I'm getting stronger, I'm actually stronger now than before I had the operations. I don't feel it. Actually, when I first started out, it was pain. Anybody know what I'm talking about? You know that saying, no pain, no gain? It's disgusting. <laughs> I go home, Kathy says to me, you okay? I'm not sure. Sit down, I'll make you something to eat. No, I can't do that. Why not? Because if I sit down, I don't think I can get up. <laughs> but now, I'm just getting stronger. I don't notice it. I may not look it. Are you hearing me? But I'm getting stronger. And I know I'm getting stronger because now I can lift things quite easily that I couldn't lift at all before. In fact, when people go to help lift Kathy or my suitcase, I hey, don't worry, I'll just pick them up. I used to struggle. I used to tell Kathy, if you can't carry it, it's too heavy. Telling you something, I'm just getting stronger day by day, week by week, month by month. And if you will do those four things that I talked to you about, read the word, praise God, pray and speak in tongues, 
on a regular daily basis, you will automatically grow stronger. You may not feel it, you may not realize it, but you are. Now, I'm a night person. I go to bed at 2, 3, 4 o'clock in the morning. Mainly because I'm doing meetings most nights of the week. And it takes time to unwind. You may not understand that. So, I've been reading in the Word of God things like, Early will I seek. Hello? <laughs> In the morning will I call upon your name. Things like that. But I am sleeping early in the morning. <laughs> and I certainly do not want to be legalistic about this. But I discovered that if you do these four things in the morning, it sets you up for the rest of the day like front-loading your life with a good breakfast. So I try to excuse myself by telling God that I go to bed too late to get up early. In fact, I go to bed early in the morning. <laughs> and I tell God, I get up late. So I can't do it early in the morning. How many know God's pretty smart? <laughs> I know that these excuses are not cutting it with God. I know that. But maybe he just got a little busy and was dealing with somebody else and my stuff went by him. <laughs> no. And God said to me an amazing revelation. Go to bed earlier. <laughs> Hello, somebody goes, that wasn't very deep. Oh, no, I was just making fun. No, but I, I go to bed late. I never created you that way. You created yourself that way. Oh, okay. <laughs> go to bed earlier. I can't. Why not? Because if I do, I don't sleep. How do you know? I just know. You've never tried it, so how do you know? <laughs> I got a grandson that says to me, Poppy, I hate butter. I said, have you ever tasted it? No. <laughs> then how do you know you hate it? I just know I hate it. <laughs> Anybody know what I'm talking about? Yeah. Go to bed early. So, I try to go to bed earlier. 11 o'clock at night. First week, I, I'm not sleeping because there's a sleep pattern that started at 2 in the morning. But after a week, I find I sleep. And I'm getting up earlier. I mean, I'm going to bed three hours earlier. That's a miracle. I'm getting up earlier. And I'm reading the Word with a cup of coffee in my hand. Come on, come on. Don't need to get all religious about it. I sit out in my veranda, my balcony, looking over a spring-fed river, the first tee of a golf course. Sunshine, blue sky, the 
vision statement for the state that I live in in Australia is beautiful one day, perfect the next. Hallelujah. <laughs> I read the word. I praise God. I pray and I speak in tongues. And I've discovered I'm growing stronger. I'm getting fat. Things are better during the day. The yoke is just breaking automatic. I don't have to go to war with the devil. And I'm reacting to situations better. You ever been driving and somebody cuts in front of you? Oh dear God, you'd wondered if I was a Christian when that would happen. <laughs> Anybody? No, don't raise your hand. <laughs> now I go, I bless you, my son. <laughs> but I'm reacting better. I'm responding better. I'm doing things better. Because I'm front-loading my life and I'm feeding my fat. Hallelujah. Look at what the Word of God says. John 8, 32. You shall know the truth, the Word of God, and the truth, the Word of God, shall set you free. Psalm 119, verse 11. Thy word have I hid in my heart that I might not sin against thee. This word will keep you from sin, but sin will keep you from this word. Psalm 132, verse 2. Amazing verse. You have magnified your word above your name. Joshua 1, verse 8. This book of the law, the word, shall not depart from your mouth, but you shall meditate in it day and night that you may observe to do according to all that's written. For then you will make your way prosperous and have good success. Psalm 107 verse 20, he sent his word and he healed them all. Psalm 119 verse 28, strengthen me according to your word. Psalm 119 verse 105, your word is a lamp to my feet and a light to my path. Psalm 119, verse 130. The entrance of your word gives light. Colossians 3, 16. Let the word of God dwell in you richly in all wisdom. John 6, 63. The words I speak to you, they are spirit and they are life. John 15, verse 7. If my words abide in you, you will ask what you desire and it shall be done for you. That's if his word is in you. Romans 10, 17, faith comes by hearing the word of God. I've said it several times and I'm going to say it again. You will grow healthy, fit, strong, fat if you like, when you do these four things on a regular basis. I'm going to give you a suggestion. I don't know these people that do it. They don't, I don't think they know me. I have nothing to do with them. I don't get paid for it. Nothing. But you can download on your iPhone. See, I know. Download iPhone. I'm Getting pretty, getting there. An app. It's called U Version. You put it on your iPad or your computer. See, I know. And what it is, it's free. Put out by a church in Oklahoma City. And on it, it has several yearly Bible reading plans that you can choose one of them. Has several versions of the Bible, some I'd never heard of. 
It even if you hit a button, it'll even remind you if you miss the day. Oh, everybody goes, yeah, I need that. <laughs> I read the Robert McShane version. I'm not telling you to do what I do, but it takes me through the entire Bible every year. I read the Bible outside of that, but I make sure I do this so that I will grow fat. I get a phone call from a man that I know well. His name's Dennis. He says, Al, the doctors have told me after a myriad of tests that I have asbestosis. You don't live with that. And the amount of fluid that is on my lungs because of this, they say only one man has lived longer than two months in Australia. I went to my pastor for prayer and he told me to stop living in denial. I'm going to die. Get my affairs ready. I said, sorry, I don't want your prayers. They'd be full of unbelief. I'm going to call somebody who believes God heals today. So he calls me. We pray. We rebuke the situation. We command him to be healed. I said, Dennis, don't call me every time after you've been to the doctor. I mean, I'm happy to talk to you. Just call me when you're healed. A little over a year later, he calls me. It's only a about three months ago now, a couple of months ago, whatever. He says, I said, you're healed. He said, hang on a minute. He said, an amazing thing happened. I said, what? He said, the doctors got a special stamp made and they stamped on my paperwork, miraculous. <laughs> Hallelujah. Come on. And he said, I've been doing what you told me to do. I've been feeding myself on a regular basis and the yoke has broken. I'm in another meeting and too many people to lay hands on individually. We'd just be there for hours and hours. Not that I wouldn't do it, but it's hard on the people being in the crowd. So we pray a mass prayer where they lay hands on themselves. There's nothing in the hand. Are you with me? It's a point of contact to release faith. I notice some, some stuff going on over here. There's a young man, I'd noticed him when I was coming in, he had a brace on his leg from his thigh down, way down to halfway down his leg. I just figured he must have had a knee operation or something. And beside him, oh, he's about 19 or 20, beside him is a big tall guy in his 50s. Next thing, he's taking the brace off. Both of them are running around the building shouting. On the third time, I go down and stop them. Whoa, what's going on? What happened? He said, oh man, it's a miracle. I said, what's a miracle? He said, this is my doctor. He, he'll verify it. I had no kneecap. That's why I had to wear the brace. And God recreated the kneecap when you prayed. Come on, hallelujah. While, I'm doing, while we're doing that, a man on the right-hand side starts shouting, I can see, I can see. So, so what, what happened? He said, I've been legally blind for five years. When you're legally blind, you can't do anything. He said, I can read all the signs in the building. I said, hang on a minute. I got a young teenager that was near him. I said, Get, take your Bible over. Let him read something to us. Takes the Bible over and he's reading from the book of Psalms. So stop, stop. Probably knows that off by heart. 
Let's get him something out of a book he forgot was in the Bible. Leviticus. <laughs> he starts reading from Leviticus. So I go down, I got my glasses, they're just reading glasses. I put them on and I can't read it. It's a teenager's Bible with the most minute print and even with my glasses, I'm struggling to read it. But this guy's just reading it off and he'd been legally blind. Come on. I'm here to tell you today, feed your fat. And the yoke will be broken. Let every head be bowed and every eye closed, please. Nobody moving. Nobody talking. Nobody looking unless you have to. I want to pray for the greatest miracle that can happen to a human being. That is the miracle of Jesus coming into your heart and life spiritually and washing all of your sin away. Say, what are you talking about? Every person is born into this world with an inherent nature of sin because of the fall of Adam and Eve. You, me, and everyone else. But God said, I will not leave you like that. I will make a way out for you, a way of escape. All you have to do is make a choice, a decision to invite Jesus into your life spiritually. And he will come in and wash all of your sin away. So you will be as if you've never ever sinned. At this point, people start making excuses not to do it. They say things like, I don't want to be religious. We don't want you to be religious either. We're against religion. Christianity is not a religion in spite of what some people have done with it. It's about relationship. You say, well, I've got my church. It's not about your church, whether you come here or somewhere else. It's about who you invite into your life. Well, I'm cool, man. All my family's gone to church. I'm all right. No, no. Nobody can make this choice for you. You have to make it for yourself. Well, I just go home and think about it. That's just a very nice way of saying no. You say, well, I'm doing the best I can. It's not about what you're doing. It's about who you invite into your life, namely Jesus. I hear this nearly every week. Well, I I think I'm saved. I think I'm a Christian. I hope I am. If you only think you are, if you only hope you are, The reality is that you probably are not. For if you were, you would never say, I think I am or I hope I am. What you would say is, I know that I am and there's no doubt about it. So this morning, I want to pray for young people, middle-aged people, older people, husbands, wives, single people, grandparents. Say, Al, I need Jesus. The Holy Spirit is talking to you this morning. There's a war going on inside of you. The devil doesn't want to lose you, but God wants to gain you. And I'd like the honor and privilege of praying for people this morning, for Jesus Christ to come into their heart and life and to wash all of their sin away so they know that they belong to God and God belongs to them. And in order for me to pray for you, I'm going to ask you to do something. Simply raise up your hand, hold it up, let me see it, and then put it down. Would you do that right now, please? Put it right up high. Hold it up. Hands are going up all over. I'm going to start on my right, your left. Hold them up. One, 
two, I'm moving around three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, and other hands are starting to go up. Yeah, another one, another one, another one. You may put your hands down. If you haven't already raised your hand, would you kindly raise it right now? Put it up, let us see it real quick. At the back, in the rooms, in the front, just raise your hand right now. That's it. That's it. Let's all stand together, please. If you raise your hand this morning, and even if you didn't, the Holy Spirit speaking to you that you need to give your life to Jesus to have all your sin washed away. Just let me finish this. I'm going to ask you to step out of your seats, push past the people, walk down the various aisles, stand across the front here facing me so we can pray for you. Say, do I need to come? If it was worth raising your hand, it's worth coming down here. Jesus went all the way to the cross for you and I. A few steps down here will not hurt you, but help you. And the Bible is very clear. If we confess Jesus publicly, he'll confess us before his heavenly father. And finally, we're not against you, we're for you. We're for you, man. Yeah. We love you. God loves you. Most of us have made the same choice, same decision, somewhere, sometime. So everybody that raised their hand and even others that didn't, would you step out of your seats right now, walk down the front here, and let's pray for it. They're starting to come. Yeah, come on, come on. Come out of the room in the back. Everybody that raised your hand, come on down. They're coming, they're coming. That's it from over here. Come on. Come on. Over here. God bless you. Up the back. God bless you. Keep coming. Keep coming. Over on my right side. That's it. Magnificent. That's it. That's it. That's it. God love you. God love you. God bless you. Over there, God love you. We won't forget you. God love you. If there's anybody else, you can come. Anyone else? If you brought somebody this morning, invite them to come with you and give their life to Jesus. That's it, sir. God love you. We're proud of you. This is one of the three greatest decisions that a human being can make in their life. And we want to pray for you that Jesus will come into your life and wash all of your sins away. And we're going to invite you to go with one of our pastors right here, just out the side there, those steps over there, where they're going to pray with you, introduce you to some people, get you to fill out a decision card, and give you some literature because this is not the end of the journey. This is the beginning of a lifelong adventure. <laughs> Nothing crazy is going to happen out there. It's going to be cool. Then you come back, have a cup of coffee out in the foyer there. All right. So would you turn and follow this pastor right here? Go with him. Hey, you just heard that altar call. You just wanted to give God all of your heart and all of your life. Now let me lead you simply in a prayer of inviting Jesus Christ into your heart as your Lord and Savior. In fact, why don't you just go ahead and listen to me and go ahead and close your eyes and just repeat these words after me. I'll go slow. You repeat them. Say these words. Say, Father God, I come to you in the name of Jesus. I believe that Jesus Christ is your only begotten Son and that you sent Him for me 
and then he died for me on that cross at Calvary. I believe that his blood washes away my sins, that I am now a new creature in Christ Jesus. And I thank you, Lord. I receive you now and forever as my Lord and as my Savior. I'm going to turn from sin, and I'm going to turn with all of my heart and all of my life to you, Jesus, as my Lord and as my Savior. Let it be known in heaven as well as upon the earth that I am born again. I'm a child of God, that I'm saved, and I'm headed for heaven and denying my presence in hell. Thank you, Jesus. I'm alive forevermore. Love you so much. God bless you guys. Everybody just say amen and receive Christ as your Lord and Savior. So talk to you later. God bless you. Thank you for listening to the Rock Church and World Outreach Center. If this message spoke to you, please share it with us. We'd love to hear from you. You can find more information at www.rockchurch.com.